Morning everyone. Like the new haircut? Fierce. Hello again. Progress has been made since the last video. We've actually moved forward a little bit. We managed to get things done and later in the video I will be showing you two very good reasons why you should use trunking in walls. So, shall we look back at what we did? I brought an expert that knows what he's doing. Uh, where is he? <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, I've got a little bit of joy. That wooden lintel actually goes all the way over the other door as well. So we'll have to saw it to get it out. Just to make, just to make life fun. But, progress. Now, as you can see, new lintel in place. Let's have a wee close up. Lovely lintel. There we have it. Oh, nicely packed up, packed up. Cemented in. Lovely brickwork over the top. Oh, holding up. Oh, nice and solid. Yay. And from the other side, almost got away with it. It might not have to do too much remedial work. That would be nice. So, a good day's work. Mostly by Chris, but I did help. Because I really have never put a lint on before and I would have stood no chance of getting that right. But we now have a nice solid lintel and a lovely made to measure door frame. The lintel took ages, but it's done now. And the frame's in. Tidy it up. It's tea time. Okay, what you see here is the old fashioned way of getting cables down the wall. That is a little piece of pipe, metal pipe, probably even copper, but steel more likely, and the cable goes down through it, so when you hammer into the wall or nail into the wall, you hit the bit of copper before you hit the cabling. And here we have the modern way of doing it. This would be a piece of plastic trunking, and you shove the cable down inside it, your twin and earth, so if anybody drills into the wall or hammers into the wall you've got something to protect your cable. Now here you can see the way that the last DIY guy did it. You just ran the cable in the plaster which is fine until we came to chop the plaster out and kadunk one chopped Bit of twin and earth. Because the light switch is being moved from that side to that side, so there's no real contention. The additional bonus of that being that the wire coming from the light fitting over here is actually got a shorter route to get to here than it did to get to there, meaning that. I'm not putting in any new wiring, I'm just shifting all wiring, so I don't have to get an electrician involved. Hey! Call could be done by the householder, building regulations, says. I'll double check, but I'm pretty sure, as long as you don't put in any new wiring, you can re-terminate a box on the wall quite happily. Okay, so now I've got to get my wires up here to be all box down here, all chased out in the plaster. But luckily, I've only got a 60mm deep wall box and about 20mm deep was the plaster. So if I chop back to the brick, everything should be hunky dory. More mess though. Okay, well, that's the mucky work done for the day. We have chiseled out all the plaster and found out it was. Rather than 16 mil, it was only about 14 mil deep here, so I've had to chase back the, the brickwork ever so slightly. But no biggie. 
That's the box in and the channel cut and the cable management in place. One small little issue yet. Nice little crack opened up there. So that bit of plastic work is probably going to come off enough to be replaced. But as we see in the building trade, that's the plasterer's problem. <laughs> there we have it. Trunk again. Box in. Wiring in. On. Off. On. Off. On. So that's off. That's everything for the weekend. Done. Now we, uh, oh well, I have the rest of the afternoon off to play with my kid and this evening to shoot things online with my mate Andy and maybe a couple of beers if we can convince the missus it's a good idea. And then Sunday, day of rest, and Monday we start laying bricks and hopefully the structure in wood will arrive. Yay! Videos to follow. Bye, everybody.